Hello, today's topic is on how to get Australian PR with a work visa. There are two ways, either the employee sponsorship or general skilled migration. We'll show you how the general skilled migration visa pathway can be a better investment towards Australian PR than the employee sponsored visas if you are under 45 years old. If you're over 45 years old, you can apply for any general skilled migration visa and the only option is the employee sponsored visa. First off, the general skilled migration visa does take longer than the employee sponsored visa. Skilled migration has more steps than the employee sponsored visa. That said, the general skilled migration uh, comes with the opportunity to keep your options open as you don't have to uh, find sponsorship to stay working in your career. Secondly, the employer sponsored visas are more costly and demanding for your employer and your employer would prefer to hire you when you're already holding a skilled migration work visa. Thirdly, under the general skilled migration pathway, you get more variety to choose from, either the state nominated 190 or 491 visas or the skilled independent 189 visa with the same set of qualifications and points that you already have. With the 190 and 491, you don't get much choice in the location uh, at first as you can only apply for the one that you get an invitation from. On the other hand, with a skilled independent 189 visa, uh, you get to live anywhere in Australia from the start. So let's see if the general skilled migration or the sponsor pathway is right for you in terms of the process, cost and location. So in terms of the process, the employee sponsored visas. There is the 42 and the 186 permanent resident visa. If you're over 45, you can only get the 42 visa with no PR pathway unless your employer has a labor agreement. If you're under 45 and have three years of work experience, there are three processes to follow, the sponsor application, the nomination application and the visa application. While it sounds simple enough, it's not so easy getting an employer who wants to sponsor and you must apply again for further 186 visa to get Australian permanent residence after four years. For general skilled migration visa, uh, for the skilled independent 189, your occupation must be listed. Uh, before you submit the EOI, you should already have the English skills test and skills assessment for your occupation. And after your EOI is uh, selected and you get an invitation to apply, you only get 60 days to apply for the visa. For the state nominated category, the 491 and 190, the list of occupations for each state changes every July. Some occupations are listed for both 491 and 190, but not always. And once your nominated occupation appears on the state's list, you must check if your points uh, match the benchmark set by the state. Uh, before you submit the EOI, you should already have the English skills test and skills assessment for your occupation. Your EOI then gets selected by a state. And after that, if you get an invitation from the nominated state, you must apply within 60 days. There are many policy uh, updates in every state, which sometimes makes it more easier to get an invitation from one state than another. And now for costs, uh, the 42 visa sounded simple enough, but uh, you should look at the hidden costs. Uh, and that's in finding an employer in Australia who wants to sponsor your 42 visa as you need to resign from your current job and devote your own resources to do that. And after you get an employer to sponsor, your employer has to pay the sponsorship and nomination fees and other costs such as the SAF levy. Any change to your employment means you have to start the whole process again, including the sponsorship and nomination. Um, and also, if you are not from an exempt country, you must get an English skills test and also a skills assessment. With the general skilled migration visas, the 189, 190 and 491, there are many costs involved to achieve the required minimum of 65 points for any of the general skilled migration visa uh, categories. But these costs are invested towards getting your Australian PR. So the English skills test, the skills assessment and your qualifications. After you achieve the 65 points, uh, you can begin the process by submitting the EOI through Skill Select. This saves your resources and time as you don't have to quit your current job in order to access the general skilled migration pathway. For those who lodge an EOI for 190 and 491 state nominated visas, there are relocation costs if your nominating state is different to your current address but these are costs that are directly aligned to your goal, which is to get Australian permanent residence. And for the location, uh, with 482 visas, you uh, cannot relocate 
to another state or change your employment so easily. With the general skilled migration visas, however, for skilled independent 189 visa, there are no residence conditions attached. Uh, and for the 491 and 190 state nominated visas, only the 491 requires you to live in a certain area for the first two years on the visa. But after fulfilling the two years, you are not restricted to any particular location and you can move freely to another state. So now you know the General Skill Migration Visa offers more uh, flexibility than the employer-sponsored visas in terms of the process, cost and location. If you need our help with your Australian PR pathway, please book through the link in the description below. That's all for today's topic. Bye-bye.